The Manus Island standoff came to a head this week. The 400 uh, men who are at the uh, former Manus Island detention centre who've been refusing to leave the Papua New Guinea authorities came to, um, and I'll use the expression, physically remove them uh, because they're uh, contrary to you know what they're claiming. There is a, a brand new uh, $10 million facility built by the Australian government that is ready for, for them to uh, move into. But obviously, uh, this uh, closure of the the centre is uh, they're they're trying them and uh, their advocates back in Australia are trying to use this as uh, another opportunity to put pressure on the government to cave in, uh, you know, cause a, a confrontation, get the international media saying, you know, look how horrible Australia's being being to these uh, uh, asylum seekers, uh, and of course in Australia for three weeks now uh, refugee advocates have been staging uh, protests in uh, major cities they've been occupying uh, immigration offices and uh, what i found the most despicable of all was uh, on melbourne cup day they drove a, a car onto the flemington race course to stop uh, uh, race uh, race goers uh, attend attending the, the cup because uh, in their opinion, they wanted to punish race goers for their alleged uh, uh, complicity in uh, Australia's uh, uh, border protection uh, policies, which I've always found is like, wow, that's like a great way to convince people of your uh, position, just, you know, piss them off, you know, uh, them going about their daily business. Uh, there are two types of people in this world. Uh, people who uh, want to be left the hell alone and people who won't leave people the hell alone. These loon bag nutters, um, these crazy idiots uh, who don't realise uh, the complete significance of the wondrous work of the government on this issue are letting us all down. They are really damaging our great reputation uh, in the eyes of of the media across the globe for their own petty political games. They really need to be reined in. Uh, and if these protests continue, quite frankly, uh, if they are disrupting the government uh, functioning properly, uh, if they are sitting in uh, government offices and, uh, and acting unlawfully, uh, these protests must be stopped. I do respect their right to freedom of speech if they are compliant with the law. If they aren't inhibiting you know, other people's uh, ability to practice their own jobs, that is fine with me. But what these idiots don't realise uh, is that the people in Manus Island have essentially been moved from a, a temporary hostel with education, air conditioning, great food, to essentially a three or a four star hotel uh, and they've been given jobs and opportunities, but still somehow to these morons, this is still a violation of human rights. Now, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. And a lot of the uh, information about the uh, standoff is being uh, relayed into Australia by this uh, uh, well, he's a, he's a journalist, uh, uh, but he's being held at the uh, detention centre from, uh, he's from Iran. I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name. But, you know, we're, we're told that they're, you know, they're living in squalor, like they're in makeshift shelters, yet they're able to, you know, tweet out what is happening. They're able to, you know, write op-eds for The Guardian, I mean, you know, if you've got access to modern technology, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think you're living in the, you know, squalor that you claim you are. Well, so there are some great developments happening at the moment. One of them is 3D printing. and One of them is the legalisation of euthanasia in Victoria. Now, I encourage, no, I can't encourage uh, uh, writers of The Guardian to do that. I might get myself in trouble. But... What, what happens is, essentially, these uh, loon bags uh, hijack these poor and innocent people uh, for their own political gains. I don't think they care about these people. Uh, I really do think the Australian government and the Australian people do care about these people, and that's why we have said to them uh, that, you know, we can't have you in the country, but we can give you opportunities. We, we love and we care for you, but we don't want more of your comrades 
uh, more of you of your buddies to be uh, to drown at sea. One of the most traumatic things that I ever saw uh, was that boat hitting the rocks on Christmas Island. I saw that on the ABC on a shaky handheld device. The box, uh, the boat, you know, hitting the rocks at Christmas Island. Uh, people going overboard and drowning. Um, I don't want to see any more of that. But I want to see these people dealt with humanely uh, and, and dealt with well. And I think that's what we're doing at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're talking about, you know, how horrible it is that these men are, you know, being f physically removed, dragged. Well, the reason why that's happening is because, you know, these refugee advocates have instructed these men to, you know, stay because, you know, oh, if you just do this, you know, you'll be guaranteed to, uh, you know, be let into Australia. So they could have, you know, three weeks ago, they could have been at these new facilities. Now they claim, you know, they aren't ready or, you know, they haven't got access to, you know, electricity or anything like that. But we've seen photos of the facilities. They look they look pretty good, uh, in, in my opinion. I mean, they, they, they could have, you know, just, you know, been, you know, quite have... Uh, quite comfortable in this new centre, but, you know, they're uh, refugee advocates have put a thought in their mind that if you, you know, just subject yourself to, you know, this uh, 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 this type of stunt, then it will, you know, we'll, we'll definitely uh, achieve our, our policy goal. Okay, I've got two questions for you, Tim. Uh, if you were travelling uh, by foot, uh, you were tired, uh, you, you had to go to sleep somewhere. Uh, would you sleep at the new uh, facility that's been built by the Australian government? Would you deem that to be comfortable accommodation for you? Oh well, it looks uh, it looks like a you know decent hotel room. I mean, when the I, I saw when those uh, photos were posted, I saw a lot of comments saying, "Wow, you know, uh, I think a lot of Australians would you know love to have facilities like that." And, you know, that's the old cliche that might be dropped out, but I do think that there are good facilities there. Uh, there's a deal in the in the works with the United States. Uh, there's jobs there. Uh, they're now legally, I believe, uh, PNG's uh, issue. Uh, and they're in another sovereign country. The issue has been dealt with. Uh, they've got new facilities, and I encourage them to move to these new facilities that have been built on the uh, backs of uh, hard paid for taxpayer dollars. And the other thing that, that I would probably think might be the case is they might even have faster internet speeds than you and I at the moment, Tim. <laughs> oh, who knows if they're pumping out all those tweets and uh, op-ed pieces. Uh, but you know, it seems the strategy of these uh, refugee advocates back home is to just cause as much disruption in it as possible in the hope that, you know, the government will just be intimidated to uh, reverse their position. But uh, to give the government credit on uh, border protection, they know that they have to be 100% firm that any sign of weakness will, will see the, the people smugglers return. And it was interesting that uh, in the wake of Jacinta Ardern's uh, offer to take 150 of the men at Ma Manus, there were actually a few asylum seeker boats that were sent New Zealand's way that were stopped uh, by, by Australian authorities. So that, that is how easy it is to start up this uh, people smuggling uh, trade again. And also the government knows that the Australian people are on their side. I mean, one of the reasons why Tony Abbott won the 2013 election was on the platform of stopping the boats. So it is, it, it is a widely supported uh, po policy position of uh, uh, the, the left can, you know, carry on all they want, but uh, it's it's one of those things where the silent majority, the the people who vote in numbers, you know, they're they're happy with the government's position. Well, largely, uh, Malcolm Turnbull has uh, carried uh, the torch here uh, of of I guess truth. Sometimes truth is hard to swallow, but. At the end of the day, the truth of the matter is what the government are doing uh, is the benefit of these people. They're stopping people drowning at sea. They're stopping the profiteering of trafficking human beings. Um, and they're just taking the moral stand. And what many forget, especially on the radical left, is that Australia has the basically the highest intake per capita 
of uh, refugees on humanitarian grounds around the world. Uh, we do our fair share. We give plenty in foreign aid. Uh, we've contributed to peacekeeping missions uh, in the in the uh, East Timor. We we do plenty for uh, humanitarian reasons. Um, and to call us uh, to call us inhumane uh, to say that we breach human rights rights when we care, when we're doing our best to protect our borders, but also to protect these people from thugs and criminals who want to take advantage of our lives. I take personal offence to that. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.